Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and in this video I am going to show you five stitches to embroider trees with. So I'm just going to run through my setup very quickly. I've got my fabric on my stretcher bar frames. I've got my five trees drawn onto my fabric already. Um, for our YouTube channel members and our patrons, there is a sixth tree coming just for you and I'll show you uh, that later. So do keep an eye out for that one. And I've got my frame held in my versatile table clamps, which is clamped to the table. So I've got it really steady for me to work on. I'm going to use some different threads throughout and I'll explain what I'm using, what needle I'm using as I go along. But let's jump straight into the first tree. So I'm going to do a little fir tree first. Now I'm not doing specific trees, but I kind of group my trees into different kinds of trees. So we're going to look at a sort of fir tree, pine tree. And I've drawn this onto my fabric. I've used a water erasable pen. You could use a fine line, a permanent pen, you could use a friction pen. We've got lots of different ways to put your design on. You can check out that video. I'll put that up in the corner for you if you want a different way to transfer it. And all of these designs are on a free PDF for you. So if you want to have a go at these trees, you can. The link to the description, the link is in the description below this video to that PDF um, on the website. You can go and download that and have a go at these yourself. So I'm going to work all of the trunks on all of these trees in the same sort of stitch, but I'll show you a couple of them so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just start with a stranded cotton. And as I mentioned earlier, I will change threads and use different threads throughout so you can see what they look like. I've got two strands here of a dark brown colour. Got it in a number nine embroidery needle. And I'm just going to start with a little knot on the top there's a little knot in the end of my thread there however you want to tie a knot it's absolutely fine and that's a waste knot that will get cut off later so I'm just going to put that on the top I do two tiny little stitches right next to each other and that will just secure the end of that thread and then we can start stitching with it we'll stitch over those two stitches and when we've done a little bit of stitching we can cut the knot off and that's a really nice tidy way of starting your thread and I'll do that for all of my thread starts and I'm just going to do a split stitch as I come down now this has got a very narrow trunk these are tall trees or very narrow trunks compared to other trees so I'm just going to do a split stitch initially and then I'm going to go into a kind of a long and a short stitch and I'll do that for all of these trunks for the trees so I'm just going to go all the way down with my split stitch so I'm coming up through the middle of the stitch, splitting it halfway through the middle and taking a little forward stitch. Then I come back up halfway through the middle of that stitch, why it's called split stitch. And then as the trunk gets a little bit wider, I can start to put some extra stitches in at the side. So I can just come down now, I kind of go into a long and a short so long and a short, it's just really variegated length stitches. Don't worry about one being long and one being short. And I can do two next to each other now. And then I'm going to come out of those stitches and just get a little bit wider as I go towards the bottom. Coming out of the stitches, take a longer stitch down. Don't end up with a stitch in the same place because you get a line across the bottom. So make one a bit longer than the next one. And I'm just going to fill in that shape with those stitches and I'm just going to stick to one colour for now because it's not many stitches in this and I'll show you how to induce this second colour in the next tree. You can just see it getting a little bit wider at the bottom. I'm just angling my stitch out a little bit so the tree looks like it's got a firm base to the bottom. It's not going to fall over. And I'm just going to fill in that shape, just again splitting the one above. And just bringing them all down at the same level just to finish off the trunk a little bit one at the side just to go out a little bit makes it look like the tree is really grounded and that's all there is to that really simple and then when I've done that I can cut my little waist knot off and that's all nice and neat and tidy on the front and on the back. That's all there is to the trunk, so let's have a look at the leaves. So I'm going to use a perlay thread. This is a perlay number eight, nice and fine one for these pine needles. 
I'm going to start at the bottom we're going to do a row of that and we're going to use a blanket stitch so it's a little bit more spaced apart than a buttonhole stitch but it's very similar stitch I'm going to start right on the end here I've done my, my not my two little small stitches to start and I'm kind of going to work it upside down to the way I would normally work it and you'll see how that works in a minute so as a loop goes to the top and I'm just going to come up on that line that I have drawn and this is going to be a little short one so they're going to get longer as they go in towards the tree so I'm going to leave a space Make that one a little bit longer, a loop up above, I come up inside that loop on the line and then I pull it away from me to tension it. So let's make these sort of different widths apart but you do want to make sure that your needle comes out straight above where you went back down, they need to hang vertically down. Let's do a longer one. Not always tensioning away so we get that finish on the edge. Let's go a little bit closer together, make my loop above. Tension away. Let's get a bit longer now. They sort of get finer as they go towards the tip. So if you do nice little short ones at the tip and longer ones as you come in towards the centre, you should get that good effect. And just vary them as they would on the tree. If you make them all nice the same length, it doesn't look terribly tree-like. And I'm going to go right up to the trunk of the tree, like so. When I get to the end, you just need to finish that stitch off. I'm going to go down the other side of that just to finish it off. And it's as easy as that one branch done. So you can carry on down this other side with the same piece of thread if you like. So again, coming up on the line, I'm going to do a nice long one. There's my loop at the top. So I can continue from one side down to the other. If you're a left-hander, you might want to go the other way around. You might want to start from the right and go to the left so you can see what you're doing, but otherwise the stitch is exactly the same. Just go the opposite way to the way that I'm going. And you can see how that makes an instant fir tree. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom with that one and finish it off and then I just want to change colour and show you the second row so you can see how you can overlap them. So I'm going to use one of our Burmalana threads so that's 50% wool and 50% acrylic so it feels nice and soft like wool but it's really strong because it's got the acrylic in it and I'm going to do the second row over the top and if you looked at an actual tree you'd see that the branches all sort of overlap each other a bit so that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to start exactly the same way do a little short one at the end for the tip and we can get long so it's exactly the same stitch inside the loop but what we can do now is I can take my needle over that previous row and just have those branches overlapping a bit I'm going to cut my knot off so it's not in the way you don't have to do it with every one you could do the next one a little bit shorter but just vary it a little bit so it looks a bit more natural Take that one over the top and that one as well. So you choose, just vary it each time and then you can just overlap each row with the next row that you work on top. Okay, so I'm going to work some more branches and then I'll come back and show you it when it's finished. So when you get to the top, they're quite short rows, <laughs> but you just keep doing it in the same way. The stitches will just be a little bit shorter. And it's quite nice if you do this and I think in a slightly finer thread if you can because it gets a little a little less dense is that word <laughs> the top of the tree so smaller stitches you can still overlap them if you want to but there won't be so many because we're going to stop them just a little bit short and you can put as many rows in as, as you like this tree is quite small so I can demonstrate it easily but you could make a great big pine tree, fir tree, if you wanted to in exactly the same way. So a nice simple way of making fir trees and pine trees. 
So for the second one, I'm going to show you a bit more of a formal tree. So I'm going to do a yew tree, and I'm going to do more of an ancient yew tree um, because they have amazing, big, thick, chunky trunks on these yew trees. But I'm going to do one that's been clipped and, and looked, a, looked after, inspired by when I was at Hampton Court Palace and the classroom that we were in when I did my embroidery training looked out to the east front and it had rows and rows of these yew, tree, yew trees easy for me to say, all very carefully pruned to a nice mushroom shape. But if you go to lots of stately homes, especially in this country, you will see lots of trees like this. And if you wanted to do some sort of topiary kind of a tree, this would be a good one to do. Um, I just want to mention quickly about drawing this shape. So this is on the download that I have for you. Um, but if you draw around the shape, this stitch doesn't cover the whole line. So you either need to draw around this with something that you can remove. So the water erasable pen or the friction pen or you could just do a line of stitching around it you could cut that out from the pdf the shape of the tree and you could stitch around it in a running stitch so you can pull that stitch out later because you will be able to see this line so just a little warning there for you so let me show you the trunk of this one because as they get old these trees these trunks look really spectacular and what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to mix some colors because the trunks wouldn't be all one colour. So each time I do a tree, I'll add something else for you to have a little think about. And what I've done this time is I've mixed my colours in the needle. So I'm using two strands of stranded cotton and I've got a kind of dark brown and a reddy brown. It's fairly close to it, not too different because you'll get a weird stripy tree, but that will just hopefully look a little bit more interesting in the bark of the tree. It'll add a little bit of interest to it. You can stitch your two colours separately and mix them if you want to. If you've done long and short stitch and silk shading before, you'll probably be familiar with that. We have got a video on that if you're interested to learn. But an easy way is just to mix them in the needle if you're just beginning. You don't really have any control about which colour comes out where. So it's a little bit um, of an unknown technique. But you can always add in a lighter colour over the top if you wanted to in a few stitches, but this is a nice quick way of getting the trunk in and just adding that bit of texture. So I'm just doing down to the bottom of the tree, getting a nice flat bottom there and just alternating the length of my stitches, a long one and a short one, or a not so long one. And that just helps the rows to blend so it doesn't look like it's really stitchy. Do a big long one up there if we want to. I'm doing them next to each other and filling in that space. Whereas there are spaces between branches, there aren't in the trunk. <laughs> so you want these stitches nice and close together. Make a nice solid base for your tree to go on. And you can see those colours coming out actually. That looks really nice. And they're just doing their own thing, not got any control over that. You could use a variegated thread as well, one that changes colour throughout. I did look at my variegated threads and decided that they were a little bit too stripy. Colours were too different. So for the next row, I'm just coming out of the middle of the stitch now. And I'm going the other way and going up towards the leaves. Vary, varying where that comes out as well. So that we don't get any blocks of stitches. I don't have to think about the colour because it's already doing that in the needle and I'm just going to fill in the other way and that's only really two rows. I might put a couple of extra ones in and I'm not going to stop dead at the bottom with this, at the top, sorry. I'm not going to make a line. You'll see why when I start to do the foliage on this, on the leaves. And then the last stitch in there, we'll just take it into the shape there and then I can just finish that with two little stitches there. I'll make sure I cover those when I put my green stitches in and I will show you at the end of this one how to finish your thread on the back. When you've finished your stitching, so cut that off, cut that off. Okay so as simple as that, really nice way to get some extra colour. So let's look at the greens. So I'm going to also mix the colours for the green. So what I've done now is I've got three needles set up. I've got my stranded cottons again, just two strands. And I've got two dark ones. And then I've got a dark and a light, lighter one. And then I've got two light ones. So I'm going to try and swap these around a little bit because this will make a really 
big difference to how your tree looks. If this is a step too far, it's absolutely fine. Just stick to one colour for now or put two colours in the needle and just stick with that. But I just want to show you where you can take this if you want. So we are going to just start with the dark one, which is that one. And I'm going to show you the stitch. I'm going to do this at the bottom and where the light, the sort of sunlight would hit the top of the trees will make that a little bit lighter on the top and a bit darker underneath. That kind of an idea so that you can add a little bit more dimension. So we're going to do eyelets for this one. So these are really lovely to do. This is one of my favourite <laughs> favorite stitches. So we're going to go round in a little circle and we're going to take all of these stitches down into the middle. I'm going to cover up those two little stitches I did. And you can make these different lengths. Remember the tree is quite organic. If you make them all beautifully the same length it won't look so organic. So you can just make a longer one and cover up those two little brown stitches that I used to start my trunk with. I'm just going to go around in a circle. We can pack these in really tightly, we can overlap them, we can change the colours of them. It makes a really nice texture. I'm not looking to make individual leaves with these trees, they're too small for that. So I'm just looking to create different textures with my stitches to represent trees rather than stitching every single leaf. Just get rid of the knot. You can do that when you've been around a bit. So all different lengths back to where you started and then we can come back out between those stitches and start a second one. So that will be the middle where I've just gone down and then we'll start to go round again. It doesn't matter if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. Or even counterclockwise if you're in the US. I'm just going round in a circle into the middle each time, make some of them longer, some of them shorter. And get quite a few stitches in and cover and don't be afraid to go over the edge however you've marked the edge of this design whether you've done it with a, a stitch to take out later or a pen that you can remove. And come right over the edge just to make it a little bit more organic. If you look at the ones at Hampton Court they are immaculate, <laughs> dead straight across the bottom. But we're going to make it as a little bit more tree-like and then I could go over here and you could jump around a bit with your colours if you like. You don't have to do them all next to each other because we can bring those other colours in between and mix them up and you'll start to see that texture come. So I'll finish this one up, we'll put the one lighter one in just so you can see what it looks like and then I'll show you the whole thing. So you can see a little bit of that light thread coming through now, just adds that little bit of interest and I can see I'm going right down into the trunk now just to sort of look like one part's attached to the other and it's not just sitting on top of it. So you make one longer and you can go over the tops of these leaves as well if you want to. Be quite free with these, they don't have to all sit together nicely. You can go right in there, come over the top of all of them and they'd all look like they're overlapped as if they would on the real tree. So I'm going to carry on like that with these ones. I'm going to bring this lighter one in here, somewhere around the top here, mix that up as well and see if we can get some light and shade in our tree and then I'll come back and we'll have a look at the whole thing. So I'm quite pleased how that's come out with those different colours um, with that light a bit on the top and dark underneath, that was really nice but I've got a couple of gaps um, that I don't really want to be gaps so all I'm going to do with that is just jump in and put a few stitches in. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> Jonathan will know. <laughs> Jonathan's editing it. So I'm just going to put a few random stitches. I'm not even worried about whether they're eyelets anymore. I'm just going to fill in the gaps. So you can put as many in it as you want there until you decided that's finished. And you can see now why um, what I meant about the edge and not being solid. So you can see my line through the edge. So I haven't got my water pen. I shall get my water pen. <laughs> And show you how to get rid of that. Found it, <laughs> it's right by the side of me. So this is just um, a, a barrel, empty barrel with some water in it. You can just dip 
an ordinary brush and some water make sure the water is clean and the brush is clean or if you don't have those you can just spray very lightly with a water spray and that will get this blue pen off if you're using one of these water dissolvable ones and if the lines come back just do it again you're basically washing the ink out so you can do that to get rid of it if you used a friction pen you can either use an iron or a hairdryer to get rid of that um, and then I'm just going to show you how I finished that um, that thread on the back so there's the end of my thread and then just to finish that you can just weave underneath a few stitches near to where that thread finishes you just go under some of these green stitches just go back and forth a couple of times to make it really secure When you've done that and you're happy that's not going to come undone you can just cut that off really close and it's all nice and neat on the back there's no knots to come undone or any lumpy bits and that's the way that I finish all of my threads when I turn it over on the back and do it so you know how to start and you know how to finish them nice and neatly so before we look at tree number three I just want to say a quick thank you to those of you who have clicked the super thanks button recently to show your support for the videos and that you're enjoying them it looks a little bit like this I'll put it over here um, and you can just donate to the channel and everything we make goes back into the equipment of the channel and I'd also like to thank our channel members and our patrons as well thank you so much for your continued support um, that's much appreciated we've got another little tree coming for you it's this little fruit tree here so if you want to know how to make this tree you'll need to sign up to our patron or our channel members page you can see how to do that in the links in the description below this video your support is greatly greatly appreciated um, and that one is coming for you so i'm loosely calling this one an umbrella pine but basically any tree that's got a lot of foliage at the top so jungle trees something like that if you live somewhere exotic <laughs> you might have a tree like this so i'm going to start with the trunk again i'm just going to do something a little bit different at the top so i'm going to show you that so i've got two strands of cotton again you don't have to use two strands if you want to make this bigger you can use more if you don't know how many to use you can check out my video on stranded cottons i'm just going to put some little branches in so i'm going to do two little ones at the top i'm just going to connect this bit up here just going to do some straight stitches and i'm going to do my split stitch going down here so you're really just using the stitches to make the effect you want don't worry too much about what they're called let's do another one in there and then i want to do two little branches off to the side so i'm going to do jump over here actually i'm going to do a sort of a feather stitch come buttonhole feather stitch really so i've just come up inside that loop and just pull on it gently and you can see that nice curve you get i'm going to do that again so i'm going to go down there i'm going to do that again i'm going to come up inside that loop it's a bit like a fly stitch i suppose cross between a fly stitch and a feather stitch and just pull it gently so you get the nice curves go down the other side of that and we just get instant branches <laughs> You have to just look at your stitch and think how can I use this stitch to make it say what I want to say. So we'll do the same here. It's a feather stitch because it's attached to the next one. So I'm going to come up inside there nice and gently down there and do another one. And that just instantly gives me those branches. You can just do some straight stitches if you want to down the other side to finish it and then I can jump back across to the stem and I can continue down the stem with a mix of my split stitch down there and we could go into a little bit of long and short as it gets a bit wider at the bottom so I'm sort of starting to mix my stitches now to create the effects that I want to so it's just adding a little bit of extra detail in there how to put different stitches together to create these different effects so for the top of this tree we are going to do French knots now if the word French knots strikes the fear of <laughs> dread in you you think I hate French knots we've got a really good we've got two good videos actually a short version and a long version all about French knots and um, how to do them 
what to do if you can't do them and if it's going wrong and how to fix them and then I promise you you will love French knots so do check that one out if French knots are your nemesis and um, I'm going to show you them briefly here though and um, we're not trying to create the leaves as I mentioned earlier we're trying to create the effect and I think this is a really good one for texture French knots you can do so much with it so I'm going to try the shading again as we did in the previous one and I'm going to start with a dark colour near to the bottom and we'll mix the colours a little bit as we go up the shapes. I'm just going to fill each sort of shape with French knots and try and get those defined as different shapes. I'm just going, bringing my thread out where I want the knot to start. The needle goes behind it, you go over and you go back. And you pull it down, keep the tension on that and through to the back. I'll show you a left-handed one as well for those of you who are left-handed. But over and back keep the tension on it when the needle goes in you can actually let go of that and pull it tight that's the trick to them so they don't get all loopy but if they did get loopy it probably wouldn't matter too much for this <laughs> give you a bit of extra texture if you want a slightly bigger one you could go around a couple of times French knot police won't come and get you I wouldn't go more than a couple because then it ends up being a bit of a different knot you could do um, a colonial knot if you want a bigger knot as well or you can make your thread thicker that's better because you keep the form of the knot and you can just fill this area in with these French knots and if you want to shade them you could leave a few spaces to come and put one in just to mix the colours up so you don't get stripy colours and let me show you a left-handed one I'll try so not left-handed so instead of going over the needle with the right hand you need to basically reverse it so you have the needle in your left hand and you go over the needle with your right hand and back and you keep that tension on. The needle goes into the fabric, you pull that tight and then you go through to the back. So you're just doing the reverse, a sort of mirror image really. So I'll try another one. Needle in the left hand, needle away, thread over and back towards you, keep on the tension. Needle goes in, pull that tight before the needle goes through to the back. So it's slightly different if you're left-handed, you'll find it easy if you do swap over like that. So let's just bring another colour in. I'm going to leave this one on the top. I'm just going to park that one there. Let's cut our starting knot off so it's out of the way. And I'm going to bring in another colour. Let's bring in this one. So I'm going to switch back to my Burmalana thread now for a little bit of different texture just to show you that how they look together, how different threads look. You can experiment and see what textures you can create with the threads that you have. I'm just going to mix in this thread. This is a bit thicker because I've doubled it now. So I'm just going to go around once with this, scatter them around a little bit. Where they go underneath another um, part of the leaves, let me just cut the knot off and I can show you that. So you can decide here whether this goes underneath this one or this comes over the top. So we could make it a little bit darker and a bit lighter on that top one and then you'll be able to see the different shapes. So just have a little think about where you're putting these colours. So I think we'll go a bit darker underneath there. With a couple of the knots and we go lighter on the next area and it separates the two so you can just start to think about your colors a little bit as you learn how to do these and then i can park that one over there ready to stitch up there so i don't have to start and finish my stitches each time and then i've got a third lighter color again which i will bring in on the top and try and get that dimension so i'm going to sit and stitch some french knots and then we'll have a look at those at the end Put my last couple of knots in. I added a lighter colour because I actually thought it was all a little bit too dark. So I've gone a little bit lighter. These colours are quite subtle. I did do a little sample of this and it came out quite different from this one. But that's what's nice about them. You just change one thing and they look completely different. And knowing when to stop is quite difficult. So I'm going to put this one in and then I am going to stop. And by the time you've done that, you'll be really good at French knots. So I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to weave it through under the back like I did with the others. And I'm going to call that one done. OK, so let's stitch a weeping willow. So one of my favourite trees. They've gone um, down on the riverbank where we like to go for a walk. It's just coming out. 
into mud, which is beautiful. And there are these really lovely yellowy green, golden green colour, really quite pale compared to everything else we've done. So I worked the trunk already exactly the same way as I've done the other one. So two strands of a stranded cotton. I've just done one colour for this one. and just put a few little branches on the top of this. And we're going to do a fly stitch for this one. And I'm going to start at the ends. You can go up and down, but it is easier to start at the ends and go towards the middle. And I've got two strands in here, slightly different yellowy greens in there. We're going to see what they look like. So just a little straight stitch to start off with. And then we're going to come up one side and down the other side. And then we come up at the end of that straight stitch. We make that little V shape and then we put a little tail on it like so. So there's individual stitches. Let's get rid of the knot. And I'm going to put them together and make a row of them. And they have these beautiful long leaves on them, weeping willows, and they really hang down and they look uh, beautiful. So we're going to try and create that. So we want these stitches to be quite long. Come up there, comes up inside that loop. Tension away. So this is like that blanket stitch we did on the first tree. We put a longer stem on that and we can get these nice long stitches on it. I've done two strands but you could probably go down to maybe even one for this. They're nice fine leaves and there's loads and loads of them so if you wanted to spend a bit of extra time and get that really nice effect then you could switch down to one strand. But I'm going to do two just for the sake of filming time and camera card space. Just going to go all the way to the top and as we get near the top we're going to curve it over so it kind of all goes into the tree at the top they do these beautiful boughs at the top and they all curve in makes them quite distinctive so we're going to attempt to do that so we're going to go around in a curve so we're going to shorten the stitch just a little bit to get around the curve so that little holding stitch there is going to be a bit shorter i'm going to curve it around still tensioning away stitches exactly the same but just shorter now so we can get it to go around that curve and I think we'll just put one more tiny one in right into the middle like so so first bow done so what I found it was easy to do with this is to go back to the bottom and start again and my thread is there so if I wanted to do this one here I'm just going to step it down I'm going to do a couple of little stitches to step it across. I could go from there to there on the back but you end up with a long stitch on the back and if that comes undone or breaks on the back then your stitches come out. So just do a few little stitches to step it down to where you want to start and then we can start again. So if you've got a lot of thread in you don't need to stop and start your thread. And then you can just try changing the position of these first one was a little bit uniform perhaps so we could just try making a little bit longer and a little bit shorter adding that variation again and then I'm just going to keep working these rows and I'm going to overlap them as we did previously so I'm going to come over here and down here with one and they really get these layers of leaves in and really make it look like a willow tree so I'm going to do a few of those and then we'll come back and have a look at that so I switch to one strand actually for the rest of it because I do think that works better with it. It's just a little bit more delicate so I went round in one. It wasn't that much slower <laughs> to be honest. I've just finished in the middle so I'm going to weave that through on the back and I think you can see how really effective that is if you wanted to do a bigger tree and do loads of these beautiful branches coming down. That one would be a really, really good one to do. So that one was fun. So one more to go. So I've called this last one a plain tree. Jonathan thinks it looks like an oak tree. <laughs> so you can decide what kind of tree it is. One of those big traditional trees that I think if you said, somebody said draw a tree, this is what you would draw. <laughs> and I'm going to use a slightly different technique for this one because I'm going to use some silk ribbon for this one. And I've, um, I've worked the trunk as I've done before. And I've tried to do a little bit of actual shading on this one, a bit of silk shading. So I've done dark down one side and lighter down the other to try and give that trunk a little bit of dimension there. Now this one is dead easy and it's quite a lot of fun. So I'm going to use um, a one length of green 
thread you can use a normal sewing cotton i couldn't find a green one so i'm going to use an embroidery thread and i'm actually going to throw the beeswax on the floor bear with me i'm going to run it through the beeswax i'm getting quite tired now since the last tree so i'm just going to run that through that just to give that a little bit of strength because we're going to pull on this a little bit so a green thread of some description and i'm going to start somewhere kind of near the bottom doesn't matter too much because you'll see what's going to happen when i do the first one i'm going to cut myself a little length of this let's try that sort of a length, a little short length. And I'm going to do a running stitch all the way through the middle of that. Try and do it so you can see it. I'm just going to gather it onto the needle. Like that, and I'm going to go all the way to the end with that. And if you want to, you can change the angle that you do it. You don't have to go straight down the middle. If you can change the angle a little bit, we'll get a bit more of an interesting effect when we gather the ribbon up. So I'm going to go all the way to the end. So I've got the whole length of ribbon on that needle there. If it's too long for the needle, you can just pull it off onto the thread because it's all going to come off to the thread anyway. So when you get to the end, this is the good bit. I'm going to pull the ribbon down onto the thread like so and then I'm just going to pull it all the way to the bottom. Now you don't want to pull it up really really tightly so I'm going to kind of pick a spot. Let's go for that spot a little bit away and I'm going to pull that through and then I want to spread this ribbon out a little bit. If I crunch it all up it's going to be a really dense tree. <laughs> So you can choose how much you do this and if you just put it in then you can just pull it up and you can see how much you want it to do that and we're going to kind of ruche it around a little bit and stitch it down so I don't want to put it really tight I'm going to leave it like that it's just kind of loose at the minute and then what you can do is just put a stitch in the end just to hold that in place don't pull too hard on that because if you pull on it it'll all shrivel up even more so now we're just going to kind of lie it in position if I use this tool and you can see more clearly that's perfect and then I'm just going to put a couple of stitches into hold it's coming up in the fabric pick a little bit of that ribbon and stab down into it just to secure it in place I'm going to do one in the middle here so you get a couple of stitches in where you like it you can manipulate it you can move it around which is quite good you can see if you like it before you stitch it down and then I'm going to put some extra stitches in just to make sure that's really secure so just grab a little bit of the silk ribbon and take your needle down into it wherever you think it needs tying down to make it nice and secure then just pull a little stitch in it so outside the ribbon and down into it and just pull it down nice and tightly and it's already looking like a tree i think this one's great so i can come up in that little gap there and i can put another one on and we can weave it around there so i'll do that now so you can just push it down a little bit and then you can decide where you want to ruche it that's a word and then take it through and then I'll just pull on that till it kind of pulls up as much as I want it to I think that's enough and then up on the outside oh actually yeah that's fine up on the outside down into the silk and you can just spread the ruches out if you want to I think it's not quite in the right place I'm just tacking that down just basting that into position you can move it around and it makes such a really wonderful texture if you wanted to do some stump work maybe three-dimensional embroidery this um, this would be a really good one 
that and you can just keep tacking it down in place and you can fill that whole shape you can use finer ribbons as well that was a four millimeter ribbon you can do a two millimeter one if you want a little bit more detail maybe around the top you want to put some dimension onto your tree um, i'm using a variegated green it changes color throughout the ribbon it's darker in some places that's really nice to add again that dimension or you can change the color ribbon you use and you can mix them up as well so there's so many things you can do with this i'm going to just put those last few pieces in now so last one going in you can always fill in the little gaps with little pieces if you want to find you've got a gap but it does fill the space really nicely <laughs> this technique Just mixing my colours up as well to get that interest. And again, I didn't mention about drawing the edge of this tree in. If you don't cover it with a silk ribbon, then you'll see it. So you might want to use a method that you can remove to put your outline on. So the dissolvable pen, the water erasable pen or the friction pen. Or just tack around a shape if you don't have those. You just make sure you capture down anything you think is going to move. Sometimes those little ends poke out so you can push that in. A little stitch. Really lovely one to do this. There's just one more in the middle there. So a lot of fun, these silk ribbon ones, and you get really textural trees. So if you want to do something with lots of dimension, this is definitely a good one to do. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those trees and you're going to rush off and have a go at a tree. If you've enjoyed that video, you might like this video up here. Do go and check that one out. Don't forget that the free PDF is in the link in the description below this video. And channel members and patrons, this one is coming for you very soon.